Welcome to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Tom Block and Coach Fisher. Coach, congratulations. Uh, another win. That's 21 in a row over Wake Forest. And uh, still a lot of room for improvement, but you have to be pleased with the result as you move forward. Oh, very pleased. I thought our defense was outstanding on the day. Kept great leverage on the ball. Tackled a couple missed tackles early, but after that we really tackled well. Created turnovers. Got uh, points off turnovers. It actually scored themselves. I uh, thought we kicked the ball extremely well. Roberto was normal Roberto again. I hate to say that when you kick, just kick 50 yarders like their routine <laughs> and kickoffs. But Kaysen did a nice job in the kicking game. We covered kicks well. We got a couple of nice returns, set up a, a score before the half with a punt return. And, uh, you know, uh, Kermit was inches from breaking a kickoff return out of there at times. And, uh, you know, offensively, uh, had a couple of turnovers early, then uh, lost to center, and uh, then got get our rhythm and got some points right before the half and coming out the second half and, and you know, got, got a little rhythm on offense. Get the victory. You go to uh, five and zero with the win over Wake Forest, and uh, you know work in progress has been the theme all year, and that continues to be what it is for you. I think every team in America is a work in progress, and, I, and people don't realize that. You you continue to get better. You continue to evolve as a team, and week to week with injuries and different things that go on, but very happy with the way our kids are progressing and competing. All right, Florida State now five and zero. We will get to the first half highlights as soon as we come back right here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Tom Block, Coach Fisher, and Coach uh, Wake Forest comes to town. And uh, obviously for you, you were just happy to be back home. It was yes. a harrowing experience a week ago in Raleigh, but it was a gorgeous day for football. A perfect day. The weather finally cooled down just a little bit, and mm -hmm. you still had warmth. But, you know, just the Christmas in the air, and the guys felt really good. And great for fans. A great, great, great game to come see and just be in a comfortable atmosphere. And look at those skies. There's not a cloud in the skies. We see the and you, you know what else you saw? A full stadium. Yep. And thank the fans for what they did and the atmosphere they created again. Our fans are doing a tremendous job. Now, this first kickoff now, that's a great tackle by Roberto. We don't need to get that kicked out. After that, we got most of them taken care of. But here again, long there's that Featherston and Reggie Northup. Boy, those guys had good days. on. And uh, Here they're trying to get a little sprint out, just like it did last week. We lost contain. We're closing the gap. we got to get that receiver. They rubbed the receiver off over there and got a little space and got a first down. And great play here. But Lorenzo Fett comes underneath with that long wingspan, reaching out, making those plays. Lorenzo had a really good day. Excellent job here. Now, Eddie, Eddie can't. Got the face mask. Can't do that. I mean, great tackle, but just cannot grab that face mask like that and get pressure. We get pressure on the quarterback all day. Here they try to reverse pass. Mario at least broke it up, and we rallied to it like seeing make that play. But at least we had guys on the edge and ended up being a very short gain. And guys, in that first play of the game, Carlos hit a great run right here. Hits a nice stretch play, and we get about 22 on the first one. And, uh, you know, offense, we started to go here. Here's a nice six-yard run. And, uh, you know, had some, had some momentum, got a couple little short passes, and then – no, and here on third down, I believe this is it. We get a throw right here. Just see, got to be crisper on the route and cut it off, and we got to get that ball outside just a hair flat. The guy got his fingertips on it, tipped it up. They got a turnover. And we had turnovers on the first two drives, but our defense did a tremendous job. Look, I'm setting the edge, and then Mario and those guys converging to the ball, had the edge set and let Mario go get the ball away. Good job, Eddie Goldman in the game. Good job, at Jacob Pugh, a lot of those guys. Demarcus Walker, Chris Kasher here. Nice tackle right here by uh, – uh, Tyler Hunter, and again, not trying to make a big hit, make the smart play there. Get the guy out of bounds, get it down. Again, Featherston chasing from behind. Guy's going to be a heck of a football player now. He can run and change direction. He has a great length. Here he is trying to get a penetration, and there's Mario creating a fumble and Featherston getting it. That's what you got to have after our turnover. Great job by those guys of, of our defense. was outstanding all day. Nice to have Mario back out there. Oh, and tell you what, it makes a difference. Here we get a little pitch outside. A nice cut by Dalvin Cook. Get a north-south run. Good job blocking up front. By the right side of the line, Bobby Hart, Trey Jackson, Austin Barron. Good, good short yard. Well, Carlos ran on short yardage really well. A couple of those, he just pushed that pile, and that's what big backs got to do. Now we get the edge, get to play outside, and then here he cuts back and then bumps into Josue and fumbles the ball. That cannot happen. I mean, that just on Josue, you got to get his block, but then we still, no matter what, you can't put the ball on the ground. And we the first two drives, we put the ball on the ground after getting initial first downs. A good tackle here by P.J. Williams. I thought he is really starting to get healthy and play well again. And yeah, there's Featherston again. There he is getting to getting that speed, getting to the ball, and uh, couldn't see who was on the other side. I think Mario Edwards and those guys were involved in that play here. Getting a little screen outside. Now, we got Eddie Goldman's got to make that tackle. That's one of the missed tackles we had. We had about four or five on the day. A lot better than 33. But, uh, you know, great job. There's Nate Andrews coming on the blitz from behind. Again, Mario Edwards and those guys setting the, setting the edge on the other side. Desmond Holland. Good group of guys. You saw E.J. Levenberry getting his first start in the game. Played really well. Great job by P.J. Williams. Guys chesseling it. Jacob Pugh hustling inside out. LaMarcus Brutus. Those guys all playing really good football. And they pop a field goal. Get the lead and go up 3-0. And I can say, Wake has done a great job. They've created turnovers all year. And their defense, they play great football. Here's a big third down pickup. We get a third read 
by uh, out to Rashad Green. Big catch by him, and Jameis gets him the ball in the third read. At, uh, we picked up a third and long. Pretty good on the down, third down with 10 or 15 right here. Jameis needs to go ahead and take two more steps. He thought that was a blitz right there, and he uh, needs to get that ball out a little later, not quite early. Now we get pressure, but Jameis does a great job of scrambling in the pocket, keeps his eyes up. We had a guy open downfield for a big, big play, but we got a little pressure, but Jameis with his legs. It's a very, it's a part of his game that people don't talk about much, but it's a big part of it. Here we get a nice stretch play, or a short yardage play back inside to Carlos. Again, their defense doing a real nice job. They were, they were very difficult to go against. They have been all year. Here they're getting a blitz up, stop. Great job of picking it up. We got, I mean, just an in inches right off the fingertips right there. We got to lay out and Try to make that play, Rashad, but you know, just we just a hair off at times yesterday on offense. And that's what it can be. If you're just a tad off, it can affect the scores. But again, uh, Roberto Aguayo going in and hits a big kick. We tie the game back up. Now we're getting pressure again. We lose contain here. And now uh, that's one of the things, you know, our young ends now, that's one thing we're all gonna have to grow with. They gotta keep being consistent. It was Demarcus Walker, great to see him setting the edge over here. Derek Noddy coming in as a true freshman making that play. Guy's got a chance to be a heck of a football player now. These guys are really gonna be good players. And Featherston chasing it down inside, and there's Reggie North up again, Jacob Pugh in on the play. You had three true freshmen on the DL at points. Yes, yesterday. we did. He had a little speed sweep to Kermit. Like to see him get a couple more yards here before he goes out. We got a nice nine yard game. We got the edge blocking real well. Here we get a little bubble screen back out here. We're starting to get a little rhythm in the offense. Bobo Wilson had another nice day, I had four catches. Uh, you know, Bobo's really emerging into a big role. Here we get a, and we need to probably throw the bubble on this, and we got the backside pressure, and uh, they get a loss. We get a loss right there. Sets it behind the sticks, and that's the thing. When you get behind, you get in trouble. But great throw right here. Ah, got to catch that ball, Pops. He, he, good route. He doesn't need to leave his feet, just run through the ball. He, Christian's had a really good year for us. And uh, just let one slip through right here with their third and long after a holding call, and then uh, Jameis gets some of it back. But, you know, these people say we well, don't get the – but it's very important to get those yards back. So now you can pin them back down inside that 10. Our defense is playing well. Have some patience right here. Our defense is doing a really good job. Again, a little bit soft right there. Got to push that pile back. Jalen Ramsey, who had a good day uh, coming in there. And then uh, we got a guy, hands to the face, I believe. And we got a, there's Eddie. Eddie, again, he had another solid day. But Mario, watch how strong Mario is. And they fumbled a, fumbled a handoff. Just got to get a hold. Well, Mario getting to that football. He had a really good day. Marcus Allegway, it's great to see him back on that field right there. Here they pop a draw. They try to hit some draws on us all day. Eddie Goldman. And Reggie North of getting to the football. Great job, Nate Andrews there, PJ Williams. Guys running to the ball, hustling to that football. Here we get to punt. They're, they did it. They had a very unorthodox deal the way they punted. But again, there's Rashad Green. You know, getting a nice punt return again. And Rashad just, you know, does so many things for our team. Such a good player. Jameis here. Now we're going to get this drive. Pops a little swing screen out here. Great job by Scooter Higgins on the block. And there's Mario Pender. Keep getting better and better now. Mario almost broke. Had a big play there, about 10, 12 yards. Nice job. Jameis making a throw down the field, hits. They had a blitz on. We got Scooter Higgins gets a seam right, vertical right inside. And we're, we're moving the football now. We're moving, so we're finally getting back in that rhythm. Here we get a little stretch play to Mario. Blocked. Nick O'Leary at the point of attack. Bobby Hart. There's Ryan Hofield in the game getting action for the first time. Erman Lane. Those guys doing a great job of getting in there and playing. Here on third down, Jameis does a great job. Pump fakes and his ability with his legs again to create and that big body. He's a big, strong guy that can push that pile and get in the end zone. Our first touchdown of the day and. Finally got the lead. Then we did a great job here. We pin them back on the kickoff and are able to get a three and out, use all three timeouts, and get a great punt return to set some things up here before the half. But here's a great kickoff again. You guys covering that kick. There we go. I tell you what, Jonathan Vickers had a heck of a day covering kicks. He had two or three big hits on the day. Herman Lane, there's Marcus Olegway. Now here our defense. It's important. You pin them inside that 20 and get a three and out, and we can save clock and get a good punt return. That can set points up before the half and get, get to a two-score lead, which is very critical. And Mario Edwards again. I tell you what, when he's on the field, we're a lot better team now. That's for sure. Hmm. That guy's really becoming as a in and as a tackle. But watch this. They hit a low kick. Great job of Rashad getting it. We got it blocked. He gets back up out here. Gets us some great field position. Again, we're on the 40-yard uh, line now. No timeouts. We had to use all three timeouts, but Jameis did a nice job of working the clock. We worked the sideline. Great job, Bobo Wilson. Gets a little out route right there. Get about nine yards. We're already in field goal range. Got a third and one again. They happen to give it to us again. He has the freedom to go anywhere and found Bobo over here and we get it, we get a drive. And I thought we had a chance for some touchdowns right here. We need to go ahead and make some of these. Mm. Just, man, I thought Rashad was gonna catch that ball. Yeah, tough play, they had coverage. We missed one more and had a chance for a touchdown. Again, that was a critical play. Gets us up two scores. Roberto coming, getting a field goal. Now we got a 10 point lead and got some momentum going into half. Got a rhythm on offense. 
you know, it took a little while. You pointed out a couple of turnovers early on, and then you lost your center. Yes. Uh, talk about, uh, you know, you had a redshirt freshman that goes in. Yes. And, and, and how he, he had some high snaps, but once he settled down, how did he perform I'm going to tell you what, to go into those circumstances and what going on against what they do on defense. They're very complicated, have a lot of different blitz packages, making calls. I was extremely pleased with Ryan, Ho pleased with Ryan Hofield on the day. Uh, played really good football, very strong, 300-pound guy in there, and I think got a chance to be a very good player. And uh, now we're going to have to lean on him for a while, but I, I, we're very excited about him. And obviously, a tough break for uh, Austin Barron. Literally, there he was we playing were. really well. Yeah, wish wish him well, Coach. Let's look back the the big play of the first half, uh, presented by Napleton Infinity, and uh, it's the defense uh, exactly getting right. the ball back for you. This is the day of the defense. You know, Mario Weber's on a sack, coming off the edge after a turnover, and caused a fumble. Lorenzo Featherston getting on it to stop the momentum of the game and giving us the ball back. Again, our defense was utterly outstanding all day long. Coach, so just uh, one more comment on Featherston because he obviously has put up some gaudy stats in a short amount of time, he, but he's a work in progress too. Oh, I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, he, he makes a lot of outstanding plays, but a couple times he lost contain. He goes inside and discipline as far as not being undisciplined, but just being out there on the field and consistent with what's happening. But that guy just gets better and better. But, you know, we have some, uh, him and Jacob Pugh and Demarcus Walker and uh, Chris Casher, Mario Weber. It allows us a lot of freedom there, and those guys are all good players. But Featherston knows him and Pugh and those young guys. There's still going to be some mistakes. They're going to make mistakes when they're young, but they're also going to make a lot of big plays and have a lot of potential. We've got to get them out there and keep playing in our rotation with the other guys. Intermission uh, against Wake Forest, Florida State with a 13-3 lead. We will uh, step aside, come back, and look at the second half highlights when we continue here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Tom Blot and Coach Fisher. And, uh, Coach, uh, you're, you're busy at halftime getting your team focused on the game. But uh, for those that were in the stands, uh, a retirement ceremony for Renegade Five was held, and obviously, I mean, when you look at what the Durham family has done with the Osceola and Renegade tradition, there's none better. There is not. There's nothing like it in college football. I think uh, Allen and his family, what they do, and to help our, to help Florida State, and what it brings, the excitement it brings to the stands and the crowd and everything. It's it's one of the unique to me. If you're a, it's a bucket list thing. If you're a f fan of college football, to be able to watch Chief Osceola and Renegade run out and plant that spear. Yeah, and we, uh, we're fortunate to get to see it seven yes, times a year for home right. games. But this is what you missed while you were talking to the team. Horse. Yeah, beautiful really, horse. really indeed. And you see Allen and Bill Durham, and then we get to the second half action. Obviously, you want to try and score right away on this first drive. We do. We go score right before the half. Now we come back out. Kermit, boy, he was inches from coming out on this one now. Yeah, we're starting to get our blocks better. We're getting better in all those areas. And great job by Kermit. Now we get a nice, get a little play action. Nick and get the ball back to Nick O'Leary. We had a lot of balls called to Nick. Just either covered or took, went other places with the ball. and. Got to get him back involved in what we're doing. Doing a good job blocking. Uh, here we get a nice out route uh, over here to uh, Travis Rudolph on a big third down conversion. Critical. Travis is going to be a heck of a play. Again, play action here. Mm, we got to, uh, he tried to double move it. Just inches off. I mean, we're just, just inches all day. But that's, that's you got to keep plugging. You got to keep going. Some days it's like that. And uh, here we get a little screen route like here. Just a hair off. Got that lineman get back in the way. Just a hair. If that ball's down, that ball's coming out of there for a touchdown, possibly, or a big, big play. But that's, that's the way it goes. Roberto Aguayo hit it. We just kept playing along to get our rhythm. That's sometimes, you know, you just, not everything falls in place perfectly. Last week offensively, we were on fire. You know, then great job by Tyler Hunter getting over the top on a double pump move. With Nate Andrews, good coverage there. They were trying to screen and go. Uh, they pumped those screens. Great job uh, on the edge. I can't see, quite see who made those feathers and coming off the edge. But I think it was Eddie Goldman and some other guys in there, and Desmond Holland maybe making some plays. Now, Bobo had to go back and catch punch. Did a great job here fielding the ball again, getting them caught. We have one we didn't, but it's very important just to catch the ball. Here we get a little uh, third and 12, third and 13 pickup. Great job by Bobo Wilson. Great throw by Jameis. Good protection. Pumped it. They, they jumped the back. Again, there's Jameis with his legs, making plays. Now, I got to get down. Let's make sure we get down. Let's make sure we get, you know, don't take unnecessary punishment. But, boy, he, he's dangerous with his legs. Here we get a pumper out. They're covering it. Gets sacked right here. Dad, gum it. And then we get the ball knocked out. Uh, we come down and score. I'm going to take it back. We do score around this first drive. Uh, good throw. Second play. Oh, catch Kermit on an over route. What happened here, our receiver on the side of us running the post, he ran an overing and left the corners to, in other words, didn't take the corner with him on the post route. We had possibly had a touchdown right there. We cut the route short and that allowed him to fall back off on that over route and uh, made a big hit. Kermit was all right, though. Good and jump back up. Great play again. Tyler Hunter on the screen route. Uh, being physical, tackling well, doing a really good job. Tyler's playing really good football. Gets our guys lined up, makes a lot of calls. Jacob Pugh, keep pushing the pocket. Eddie Goldman, there we go. We get that pick. Nate on a good coverage, but P.J. making that pick and almost getting in the end zone, setting up a score right here, which is very critical. It's good to see him back getting healthy again. You can see him moving, just and the look in his eye and 
you know, just Cam Irving here, big run Cam and Trey and Josue on the block there along with Nick O'Leary. Great run by Mario Pender, good block by Freddie Stevenson. Uh, again, Hofield at center. Uh, Bobby Hart at right, at right tackle and, of course, uh, Haplett tied the other tight end. Again, another good catch. That's the one he messed up right here. He got two, as I say, two cued a little bit, tried to get too close to the sideline, kept it, should have kept it on the numbers. Now, they get a little field position here, start moving it, but then Reggie North, one guy gets to the ball and tackles, the other guy stripped. Great job. We stripped the ball out, got a touchdown, and that's what starts sealing the game away. But when you can change the momentum, is very critical. Great job, our guys, a gang tackling. That allows you to strip that ball when you have to. You've been telling us when we keep asking that the turnovers would come, and they came. <laughs> well, they come when you play sound defense. That when you just get there, tackle, keep your edges, and not trying to get turnovers, you're just playing hard football. Those turnovers come. Now, they get a little drive, hit a little slant route, and trying to get the ball out quick for our rush gets there. Tyler Hunter on the coverage, but our guys keep doing a good job. Oh, they keep squirting through. They're a good play by E.J. Levenberry. Had a nice game. Uh, Marcus Christmas, another young freshman in there. There, I can't see quite who that was that shot there. I think it was Marcus Allegway come flying through there and, and made a hit. Or Reggie Northup, one of the two. I couldn't tell right there. Ah, again, another slant route. Tyler had good coverage. That's a good throw and catch by them. Mario Webb was right there playing the quarterback. See great discipline right there. And they're just, you know, getting two or three yards at a time. Our defense, E.J. Levenberry, Desmond Holland, all those guys just getting over to that football. Yeah, they got third down. I think Jalen Ramsey gets that pass break up. Great job. His length and his arms and then uh, force him to punt the ball. We come back, throw a little out right, right here to Ehrman Lane. They're off on him and Ehrman. Boy, he, Ehrman had two nice catches on the day and had a, you know, had, a, had a big one too. So here's third down. Pick it up and watch Ehrman. He throws the guy by. Boom. And gets a cor uh, curl route, reverts out. Now, I like to see him stay a little more straight here. He's kind of running away from these guys, which made it, that's what helped him run him down. But he's still got good speed, big catch, good hands. He's going to be a heck of a football player now. Now we get the high snap, but great job of Jameis getting his hands on the ball, get down here. But that, that, was, that was critical. We can't have that now, but that's something we got to grow through with Ryan just a minute. He'll get it down. We come back here, and I thought we should have had the corner route, and then Jameis got to keep this. 15's got to be wider, and that ball's got to be wider. We had it up the seam, just you know, bad execution. But again, Roberto gets the kick. But the big thing was that the high snap, which got us back. We had first and 10 on the 12, and uh, we didn't get it done. Got some young guys in the game. There's uh, Derek Hoskins, Marcus Allegway. Good to see him keep back, being back in that game and playing. There's Justin Shanks. Great to see him back on the field. Reggie Northup closing the gap right there. Hits the arm and almost Darby never trying to get to the play. And, you know, great to see those guys hustling, just getting to that football. Good job inside. There's Desmond again, Eddie Goldman, Nate Andrews. Guys just running and playing with that football. They had a heck of a punt right here now. We got to catch that ball, though. I, I didn't, you know, every ball has got to be catchable. I thought we could have got to that ball, but we'll learn. And uh, again, that's what cost you another 20 yards of field position. Here we get a third down or second down pass, get back the ball back out to Nick O'Leary in the flat. Ended up being pretty good. Get a third down pickup right here to uh, Dalvin Cook out of the backfield. Dalvin had a couple nice runs. They get a late hit out of bounds. And uh, we're able to you know, get good field position and keep playing. Get a little play action. We got it. Now, not only, to, but you know, Dalvin's got to stay on that, but uh, 75 needs to be out there with him, too. He should have sorted out to that and then uh, had to block and then let four get out. But uh, here we get to had a route. We're trying to get to Nick O'Leary, and then uh, they busted inside, and then Travis Rudolph gets his first uh, college touchdown on a seam route inside. Great throw by James. Great run and catch by Travis. That guy is really coming on to be a heck of a player. Look at him fight through the cover. He ran a double move with Nick. They tried to grab him, but. Uh, Got the safety, got out wide, and Jameis saw it, and great by 15, finding that hole. Travis did a good job of finding that hole. Great kick right here, about the four-yard line. Guys, what a hit by Jonathan Vickers. <laughs> wow, that guy, I'm telling you guys, this guy's going to be a heck of a running back. He can block, he can run, just needs experience and get out there, but he's going to be a good player. And up front, <coughs> they popped one through there. We got our linebacker got out of the gap now. We got to stay this. Marquez White there with a good play. Doing a good job. There's with Derek. There's Keelan Smith. Out in the game, there's Nick Waysom. All those guys doing a good job. Can't see who that is. That's Jalen Ramsey. Very good tackle there. Terrell Lyons you saw in the game right there. Now we had a pop run, and boy, Mario hits one right here. Makes a guy miss, hits a seam. Got a chance to go. And he's veer he didn't see the guy to his right. He's veering away from this guy. Could have stayed vertical, and guy got him. But it's still a big-time run and big play by Mario. Now we get a pump right here. We miss a block out here in the bubble. Instead of 10 throwing out there, getting an interception or a, a pass breakup. He eats it, and, and that, that's the best thing he could have done. Here on third down, we, we or second down, we get a, Ryan Izzo gets his first college catch. That guy's going to be, you see uh, Javon Harrison in the game, 13. All those guys are going to be really good. There's uh, Kareem R in the game. Maverick's in the game. Big Rod Johnson's in the game. 
Uh, all those guys out there just playing their tails off. Again, there's Jacob Pugh. Legway, Naughty. Marquez White, guy just getting to that football. Defense just played so well the, out, the whole game. Stopping that run, that was key. We get a little quick pitch on third down. Ryan Green, he's back healthy, which we're going to need. Carlos got nicked up a little bit, so we're going to have to get those guys back out there and get them playing. Great run by him. Another good run right here. Stick it, get north-south. You see he's got some athleticism, boy. Good job by Vickers and Big Rod Johnson, those guys leading out front. And uh, now that ended the game. Dave's got a, a very well-coached football team, great guy. And uh, they did a good play, very physical and very tough. Congratulations on another win. One thing we didn't talk about there that uh, obviously, and you didn't find out about it till halftime, but you played that second half without Rashad yes. Green. Uh, certainly disappointing there for Rashad, and, and we wish him a speedy recovery. But you got to see more of your young receivers. They stepped up. We're in a 13-3 game. Travis Rudolph, Erman Lane, even Christian Green come back out in the game. You know, you saw Kermit, you saw Bobo. All those guys had, you know, Scooter Hagens, all those guys had a big burden on and, and to carry in their back, and they went out and played very well because, you know, sometimes injuries happen, and, uh, you know, AD can't carry everybody. Yeah, exactly right. Well, the defense uh, certainly did carry the day, though, and as we look oh, at no the doubt. big play of the second half uh, presented by Xfinity, it goes back to uh, Reggie Northrup and a defensive touchdown. It really was. The defense did a great job of gang tackling, allowed Reggie to get in there and strip that ball, and he got it out, and then we got it picked up and even scored after that, and kind of really, that kind of really sealed things off and got our momentum our way, and our guys just kept playing better and better. Well, and as we've talked about, you know, you're pleased with the defense, pleased with the kicking game, a little bit of inconsistencies offensively, but uh, that's the way it's going to be. You just got to keep striving to get everything together on you the do. same day. Still four for four in the red zone, only two touchdowns. Said, you know, we at least got three out of four. We're Ten out of 18 on third down, which are our third down percentage is starting to really take off. We had 475 yards, threw for 300, ran for 170. And like I say, didn't play as well as we could have, but I give, listen, Wake Forest is a very good defensive football team. They mm -hmm. coach well, they play well. Uh, a lot of good blitzes, a lot of different schemes they do, and uh, they did a really nice job and have been all year. Florida State gets the win and goes to 5-0. and Next up, Syracuse, and we'll talk about that matchup when we come back right here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. Inside the Helmet is presented by Nissan. I'm Terrence Smith, Redshirt Junior, a linebacker from Decatur, Georgia. Oh, I actually started playing football a little later on in my life. I didn't really, I played a couple years of park ball, but never really, never really finished like that. My first full year of football was uh, around eighth grade. And uh, I remember that year because we went undefeated and we won the, won the middle school championship that year. So that was, a, that was a pretty good start for me. Yeah, I did track and field and uh, I played a little baseball, but baseball was a little boring to me. I, you know, I like, I like contact and you can't really get to hit anybody in baseball. So I didn't, that didn't last too long. Well. Well, to be honest, when I was little, I wanted to be a, a spy, a secret agent. <laughs> but uh, that, didn't, that didn't work out, and football seemed to be uh, the best choice. <laughs> it was one of the best feelings ever, you know, to, to actually go and accomplish your goals and, and, and go out and do what you, you had set so far along ago. To actually go and do that, to ride back was just, was just surreal. I don't think we honestly I don't think it honestly hit us until, until we got back to Tallahassee and saw all the fans there waiting for us. That ring was just signified and all that hard work we put in over the whole year, it paid off. And it's just, that's, that's not a thing that most people don't get a chance to hold and actually have one in my possession with my name on it, which is, that uh, was big time. My main hero is always my mom. My mom raised me and my two sisters by herself, so I've always looked up to her. But uh, as far as on the football field, Ray Lewis, I just love the way he played the game, his motivation and his, his grind. I actually got to meet him once while I was in high school. And, and if you listen to Ray Lewis talk, he'll make you want to go put on some, uh, some helmet and some pads right away and go out there and play. I got a chance to visit a lot of schools during my recruiting, and just when I came to Tallahassee, man, it, it just felt like the right place to be. It felt like a home for me. Every, I like the environment. I like, I like the team chemistry. Everybody on this team is, is like brothers. Other places, 
it's just, you know, more people loners and stuff like that. But down here, we're really a family. And I like that environment, and I felt like I would be really, really at home here. 20 years down the line, I, I want to tell my grandkids that, that uh, I was a part of the, the most dominant team to ever come through Florida State. And uh, I feel like we're on track to do that, and that's what we're working for every day, is just to create this dynasty and, and bring Florida State back to how it was in the 90s. Inside the Helmet is presented by Nissan. Shotgun, the snap, looking, Winston looking, crossing route, cross, throws it to the end zone, caught ball, touchdown Florida State, touchdown Bobo Wilson, Knowles, get a huge throw from Winston. Good job, Good job, baby. Said it is dropping to throw. Brissett, oh, the ball, it's a fumble ball, diving for it. The nose of come out with it. It's a fumble football, and FSU has it. First down, FSU at the 23 yard line. Let's go. Our look ahead is presented by Farm Bureau Insurance. Register at KnollsContest.com for a chance to be the official photographer of the game. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Florida State goes back on the road uh, this week against Syracuse. And, uh, uh, you know, last time when you played at NC State, that was truly the first road game of yes. the year. So just the fact that you got one of those under the belt must help as you go into what can be a tough dome environment. No doubt. That, you know, Syracuse is an extremely tough place to play. Very loud. Different kind of noise, too, when you're in a dome. I mean, totally different. And uh, always have a great home crowd. They play very well at home. Very physical, good defensive team. Run the ball physical on offense. Quarterback's athletic, and they got a good kicking game. And uh, Scott and this coach will do a great job. He, he, he always has them ready. He's a great guy, and uh, no, they'll be ready for us, there's no doubt. Yeah, no question. It's a 12 noon kick uh, at Syracuse. Uh, you mentioned their quarterback, Terrell Hunt, is back. He was with them last year. What, what do you need to see from your team as you go into this match? Again, continue to do the things on defense, tackle well, keep great leverage on the ball, and play well. Special teams and offense get a little more consistency. Make sure we uh, help these new guys, new center up front, and making calls and getting him adjusted. And the guys around him with, you know, with the other, with Rashad still being banged up, we'll see how he goes this week, and Carlos and some other guys that, you know, we get these young guys. I told you how quick these young guys develop is going to be the key to our season. Now they're really coming on. I'm I'm excited to watch them play, and I'm excited as their roles grow. Defensively, how big have the last uh, maybe seven quarters been? You know, the game against Wake and then starting with the second quarter or midpoint of the second quarter in Raleigh for the growth of this defense. It, well, it's been critical. And, and then be hit in the mouth, have a lot of adversity, see a lot of things, or respond. Coaches made great adjustments. Guys accept them and went out and played and, and made the plays in the game. I mean, that's five turnovers in, in the last uh, two games. Big, it set up a lot of scores mm -hmm. and set, got us the lead in everything we've done. So the defense is doing a really nice job. All right, Florida State will take that defense, take the whole team on the road to take on Syracuse this week. 12 noon kick, as I mentioned. We'll have the highlights for you next week right here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. Still a little bit more to come. Stay with us. We're back. Up. Our look ahead is presented by Farm Bureau Insurance. Register at KnollsContest.com for a chance to be the official photographer of the game. 
Welcome back, Seminole fans. We're making an American favorite today, fried chicken, but doing it a little bit differently, Chef Joyce, making it gluten-free, especially for our gluten-free athletes. Correct. So um, something we like to do for our athletes that have a gluten intolerance is we like to make them food as close to what everyone else is eating because I feel like though you have an allergy, you don't want to be left out or feel that you have to eat something different from everyone else. So we like to take what we're eating for lunch, so maybe honey fried chicken Friday, and make that into um, something our students that have a gluten intolerance can eat. So today I have, um, a, we have a thigh and a chicken leg, and then we have a batter that we make for our gluten, or for our gluten-free fried chicken. And we take um, some all-purpose gluten-free flour blend that you can find at the grocery store, seasoned salt, and then we use um, soda water or Sprite to be the liquid and add some bubbles and helps it make a little more crispy. So we just are gonna dip our leg in to the batter and we're gonna make sure all the chicken gets coated really well and that it's not, um, nothing's missed. So then we're just gonna shake it off and then I have our little fryer here and we like to keep everything fried separately for our gluten-free athletes so we have this small little fry daddy. And then we're just gonna dip it in and then wait until um, it doesn't stick to the bottom and you're just gonna let it fall. So I've already done some for you, Scott, because All I knew right. you wanted to try it. Absolutely. And look at this. Perfect. Magic. Okay. So after our chicken comes out, it's going to look nice and golden like this. And the, uh, bat the batter that we have makes it nice and bubbly. And you really can't tell the difference from regular fried chicken to this. So do you want to try a piece, Scott? Absolutely. I'm more interested, believe it or not, in the Sprite that you were talking the about. Sprite? Because, you know, everybody, every good Southerner, of course, has their one way. You know, I make fried chicken the best, but using the Sprite is something very unique. Yeah, it's something a little different. It has a lemon-lime flavor added to it, and then it um, helps the batter stay a little bubbly and gives it a little extra flavor. You can really taste that crispiness, too. Mm-hmm. And you really can't tell it's gluten-free either. It just tastes like your normal grandmother's great fried chicken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some great flour blends on the market right now that you can use that can really fool anyone as to tasting what's a regular flour and what it would be a gluten-free flour. Well, Chef Joyce, thanks as always. This was fantastic. Of course, you can find all of her outstanding recipes right now by visiting Seminole.com. Welcome back, Tom Block and Coach Fisher. And Coach, uh, you, you had some interesting comments after the game that uh, you shared with the media about what you uh, shared with your team, which was mm -hmm. you just want them to, to have fun playing playing the game. And, uh, you know, you've won 21 in a row. You're 5-0, and number one team in the country. Uh, and yet, you, you know, you kind of take for granted that, it, that or, or, or sometimes you lose track of the fact that, it, that it's pretty hard with all that pressure that mounts. Well, it is. And it's not just – and fun may not be the word because football is not always fun. <laughs> it's a physical <laughs> game. It's tough. It's violent. You're, you're running. You're hitting. You're – you know, you got to do a lot of things. But the feeling you get afterwards of the joy of, of playing well and preparing well and to remember that and go ahead and enjoy it. And, you know, some things people say, well, what's wrong with this? What's wrong with that? There's always going to be something wrong. There was something wrong with last year's team. There's something wrong with the team before that and the team before that. And sometimes we in society get things in our mind the way we want them as they should be. And if they're not, well, what's wrong? Well, nothing. That's just it's who you are and you're all, we're all a work in progress and weekly we have to continue to go out and do our good job and remind our kids just to, to live in the moment, enjoy college life, enjoy being a college football player compete and remember the feeling, those, those feelings and how good it feels to, to prepare and do well and, and, and you know, get your rewards at the end of the day. You talk uh, constantly about the process and uh, not worrying about the results and the outcome and, and you, you, know, you live one week at a time and th yes. this past week, uh, no better example of what can happen on any college football Saturday oh, wow. when you look at the college football landscape. I mean, five of your top ten, I think two, three, four, six, and eight in great games. I mean, went down. I mean, I think then I think USC, BYU, and some other teams in that group I know went down also. But, you know, people, you don't realize how hard winning is and how hard to be successful week in, week out, and keep yourself prepared and to take everybody's best shot, which all good teams do, not just us. I'm not just saying us. But, you know, we, I always, old coach told me, said, don't ever not appreciate a win. Don't ever pr not appreciate the success and things that go on because it's too hard to do. And you got to remind yourself of that all the time and remind our kids. And we're, we're never satisfied. We're, we want to be, we're striving for perfection every day. In the meantime, we'll find excellence. And uh, we just got to keep going. All righty. Best of luck this week against Syracuse. And we'll see you next week right here on the Jimbo Fisher Show.